Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Coffee Break with Microchip Technology. Coffee Break is our ongoing forum in which we discuss new developments and new, new products in the technology world. I'm your host, Eric Glattfelter. Before we proceed, I just wanted to give a quick thank you to Ross Ayat for hosting the session two weeks ago while I was away. He did a great job. Ross is a Coffee Break veteran. Speaking of Coffee Break veterans, we have another veteran joining us today in the booth, doing our booth support, Allison Brown. Allison, welcome back, and would you uh, give us, give our users a quick overview of how they can interact with us today during Coffee Break? Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Eric, and good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us live on YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook. I'll be here monitoring the chats, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or chat, and we'll try to get to them at the end. If we don't get to your question or you think of something after, feel free to send us an email to livestream at microchip.com. Back to you, Eric. Thanks, Allison. Okay, on to our topic for today, cellular IoT. Joining us today is our subject matter expert, Johan Lostad, a senior applications engineer here at Microchip. Johan, welcome to the studio, welcome to the program. Thank you. All right, our topic, cellular IoT. So the word cellular has been around probably since the 70s, yep. and those three letters, IoT, for Internet of Things, uh, have become ubiquitous over the last years in any type of technology discussion. So um, when we use cellular IoT in combination like that, what exactly are we referring to? So basically, again, you, you touch on the two terms. You have IoT, Internet of Things, which is basically just the concept of you take a constrained device and you want to connect it to the Internet by some mm -hmm. means. Cellular refers to the medium you do this connection through. So when we're talking about cellular IoT, we're talking about how can you use the cellular network to connect uh, these devices to the internet. Right, so it helps to differentiate between a cellular IoT and the IoT connecting through uh, a wired media, perhaps. Yeah, sure, uh, you would have the definitely different uh, design uh, challenges. Okay, great, so can you give us an overview of what the cellular IoT world looks like? Sure, so what we're seeing right <laughs> now, there's basically two big standards that are, are, are coming up. So you have LTM and you have MBIoT. So Way back you had 2G, but now uh, with uh, how we're rolling out 4G and 5G, is LTM and MBIT that's rolling out. You can see on the map here that we have on the slide that in the east uh, it's predominantly MBIT, mm -hmm. uh, and in the west it, the map says both, but it's primarily LTM. You'll okay. find that LTM is a lot more mature um, in the west. And these two standards, they aim to achieve the same thing. How can you connect these devices? that are often both uh, power constrained and uh, bandwidth constrained to the internet. Um, and that's basically what these two standards do. Okay. There are two different standards trying to achieve the same thing. Okay. So if you're a design engineer and you're designing a new application, what, what are some of the applications that might lend themselves particularly well to using the cellular IoT? Oh, there's, there's many of them, but I think a very good example is asset tracking. Uh, imagine if you're in Europe, you want to send a package from Spain to, to for instance, Germany, mm -hmm. right? Then you'd have to uh, track this on a very, very big ge geographical area where you sure. need coverage and you're crossing multiple regions, multiple countries. Uh, and, and that's where maybe cellular IT is, is a good fit to, to, to track these assets. Okay, so the cellular network gives better coverage than say just a standard Wi-Fi? Or yeah, for, yeah, yeah, if you, that's the <coughs> thing, right? If, if you need coverage uh, over a large geographical area, the good thing about the cellular network is it's very, very it's well built out, <laughs> right? Because everybody has their phones. Yep, okay. So if you are, uh, if you decided to develop an application using the cellular IoT network, what are some of the challenges that you might have that are specific to that? So like one of them is, is uh, security is always a big challenge, sure. and that goes for IT in general. Always security, because if your device is unsecured and gets hacked, bad stuff happens. Mm -hmm. The other point is, um, um, is, is low power. Mm -hmm. right? Often these devices are not connected to any power outlet. They have to run on batteries. And uh, when you're connecting to one of these networks, that can often be very power hungry. Mm -hmm. So how do you actually design that in? And then. Um, it's also, uh, again, back to coverage, right? You want to be in, in multiple regions where you have multiple carriers yep. that maybe have different agreements and so <laughs> on and so forth, uh, and that can be a challenge. Okay, so to help these designers, we have a new development system. Uh, can you give us an overview of that, uh, the cellular mini? 
Sure. So this is the AVR IoT Cellular Mini. Uh, it's a development board for LPM and NBIT is pending. Uh, of the main hardware components we have with this board, we're featuring a AVR DB, the 128K mm -hmm. flash variant that's a mic controller. We have the ECC 608B as a secure element. That loops back to what we just discussed about how important security is. And mm -hmm. this is one of the chips we, we have here from Microchip that stores uh, these uh, cryptography crypto keys basically to yep. do the authentication with, with, the, with the cloud. And then uh, one of our big partners on this, on this board is a company called Sequence. They're making the modem that we're using. Uh, it's the Monarch 2 or the GM02S to be specific. Okay. Um, we also mentioned a SIM card from Truphone. What, uh, what capabilities does that provide? So Truphone is our second big partner of, of this board because we really built this in collaboration with, with industry experts. And uh, they provide a SIM card that has uh, basically coverage in all of the Western world. No, uh, asterisks and all. Yep. Uh, you can see their website for which uh, regions they, uh, they, are, they actually offer. But basically what they do, they have agreements with different operators in different countries. Mm -hmm. So you have one SIM card, and for instance, the scenario I just described, you're going from, um, from Spain to, to Germany, for instance, they would have agreements with the operators in each of those regions and automatically change uh, the, the change to the appropriate network in the region you're in. Okay. So you'll get that with the board. Um, in, in, the, in the box itself, you'll find an antenna that you connect to the board. You also find this SIM card, which is a 90 day free trial on 150 megabytes. Okay. And we also talk about uh, AWS. So if you're uh, developing again this app and you want to connect to Amazon Web Services, how does this tool help a designer do that? Yeah, because that's one, another, as I said, like with security, security can be really difficult. And uh, when you're going to connect to AWS or, or any cloud for that matter, there's a, quite a complex exchange of certificates to make sure that you are actually the device that you're claiming to be. Right. Uh, if you don't know that much of cryptography, that can actually be really tricky. Sure. Uh, <laughs> and that's what we're, we've uh, made a tool called the IT provisioning tool. So you basically plug in the board. Uh, it will run this tool, it'll connect to your AWS accounts, it'll communicate with the board, and it'll exchange these keys. Okay. And then it should just work. Awesome. How about Arduino? So that's another really cool feature we have with this board. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar, Arduino is a development platform or development uh, environment uh, for programming um, embedded devices. And what we did, uh, we found this, uh, or there's an open source core uh, called the DX core. Mm -hmm. And in the Arduino language, a core is just something that translates an, an Arduino specific call to uh, the device specific call, which in this case is an AVR call. Uh, we took this core and then we built a big library on top of that. So we added cellular connectivity, we added HTTP drivers, MQTT drivers, low power drivers, so on and so forth. Uh, we built all, all of that up and then we integrated it all in the Arduino IDE. So what you'll do you, when you get the board, you'll download all the prerequisites that we have described on our website. You'll then um, just plug in the board into the Arduino ID, and you can program it as any other Arduino board. Awesome. So if you know Arduino, you know <laughs> how to program the board. All right. Very good. So uh, if a user out there is watching and they, they think, uh, wow, this is the coolest board ever. I got to have one. Yeah. How can they get one? Well, uh, you can get it from anywhere we sell microchip uh, development boards. So okay. that can be from Microchip Direct or any of our distributors, such as DigiKey or Mouser. Okay, so in stock today. Yes. Fantastic. All right. Well, thanks for the overview, Johan. Uh, let's transition to Allison in the booth and uh, see if we have any questions from the live audience today. All right, we do have a couple questions. So we'll go ahead and get started. This first question asks, what cellular technology are we talking about? 3G, 4G, 5G? So specifically, we're talking about LTM and MBIoT, uh, which I believe is a subset of the 4G standard. I'm not an uh, expert on that specifically, but okay. uh, you might not necessarily have, four, even though you have 4G and 5G, you might not necessarily have MBIoT and LTM. But it is MB, MBIoT and LTM. Those are the two specific standards we're looking at. And they're different from, uh, because they work in a lot lower uh, frequency band than, okay. than traditional, because you want to use less power and then it's less, less bandwidth descent. All right, our next question comes from Jeff, and he's asking, is this board supported by MPLAB X and MCC? So it's supported as any other development board that we have out there. If you connect it to MPLAB X, uh, it'll pop up as, if you use any of our Curiosity Nanos, it'll work in the same, same exact same manner. 
Uh, if you want to use the Arduino library we built, we have something called a sketch importer, which basically uh, you, you run the sketch importer in Ampelabex and it'll in, uh, load your, the Arduino library into it. If you want to develop without the Arduino library and you just want to develop your own library, that's uh, also perfectly fine and you can use MCC for that. All right, thank you. Let's go to our next question. Do you support PSM and EDRX? Sure. So those are the two low power standards. Other than that, that's in, in LTM. Uh, so PSM stands for uh, power saving mode. And then we have supported in our Arduino library specifically. Uh, both PSM and EDRX are supported in the uh, sequence modem itself. Uh, but in our Arduino library, we've only added support for PSM. But that works perfectly fine. Awesome. And we have one more question. This question is asking, how is cellular IoT different from traditional IoT? So cellular IoT, is just, we just discussed uh, at the start, is how we can take a uh, whatever normal <laughs> device we have and connect it to the internet using uh, cellular. So it's, it's not different from traditional IoT. It's still IoT, right? Mm -hmm. It's just instead of using, for instance, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or or Olora, you're using the cellular network. That is the, essentially the difference. Thanks, Johan. I spoke too soon. We have time for a couple more questions, so I'm going to keep asking. This next question is from Gabriel. He's asking, does the SIM card function only work in the USA or everywhere? So it works at least in most European countries and in most of the US. Um, I don't. There are big regions where this SIM card doesn't work. But if you go to Trufon's website, I think if you just Google Trufon IT, they have a very good map of the, their coverage, and you can find your specific country. And I'll say if it's supported or not. Cool. Thank you. All right. This next question is from Pablo, and he's asking, "Can I create a local web server?" Yeah, like it, it, I presume the question is if you could connect or, or if you can host a local web server on it. Um, so I believe you could. Uh, at, so the sequence modem that's on there has, uh, has, you can program sockets directly. So if you're familiar with Linux sockets, you can program those directly on there. So I don't see, I'm not actually sure because you actually have to get a connection from somewhere. I'll, I have to get back on that one, but uh, it probably is. I don't okay. know. <laughs> Okay. But you can connect to your own web server. Like if you have your own web server running on some, some server somewhere and you want to connect through, let's say, HTTP, sure, that's no problem if you are the client. But if you want to be the server, I'm not entirely, like it's probably possible. We don't support it in the Arduino library at least. Cool, thank you. And we can always follow up via the email live stream at microchip.com if we need a little more information for that one. Let's see here, our next question. What are the low power techniques that you've used? So we just discussed the PSM, so the power saving mode. Uh, for those who are not familiar with, with this specific mode, what it basically is, is, is actually a, 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 that the board and the, and the uh, network actually communicates about when communicates uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, it's actually tightly integrated with the network how to, to save power. That's one of the things. And uh, we also have a bunch of good power saving modes on the actual AVR that we've used. So we may, in, in the Arduino library, for instance, we have examples of how you, you would shut down the modem into this PSM mode, and you'll also shut down the, the, the AVR itself uh, to, to reduce the power drain. We also have, um, on the board itself, for instance, we have a, a, um, a voltage regulator that you mm -hmm. can ch change uh, between uh, different modes that are more power efficient, but maybe doesn't give as much uh, power or maximum current. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a battery charger on there, and you can also configure this battery charger to, to go into the modes that you need for, for, for maximum sleep. Okay, quite a range. Thanks, Johan. We do have more questions. Our audience is very active this <laughs> morning. We love that. So let's look at this question from Don. What sort of battery is needed to power this for a trip lasting a week? And how often does it connect to the cloud? So how often, it, let's start with how often it connects to the cloud. Uh, that's entirely up to you. you that, as when you use any of these, it depends on if you're, most likely if you're doing AWS, you're using MQTT, right? So um, the good thing about PSM, the power saving mode, is that you actually retain your connection to the cellular network, which means that you can 
uh, essentially just wake up, send a message, message, and go back to sleep. How often you send that message or receive the message is entirely up to you when you write your application. In terms of what specific battery you can use, uh, it's just a normal lithium 3.3 volts battery. Okay. All right, and this next question here, is there any onboarding guide? Sure. Uh, so if you actually, anybody wants to, to learn more, when you actually get the board and you connect it into your computer, you'll get a little uh, like flash drive popping up and you can open that one and it's a file called click me. You double click the click me and it'll take you onto a, uh, yeah, what we call an onboarding guide essentially, mm -hmm. uh, which walks you through all the steps you need to do. So you have to register your SIM card, you have to download the latest firmware and so on and so forth before it takes you on to what we call our sandbox, where you can verify that everything is working, before it takes you on to our documentation, which is on iit.microchip.com slash docs, where all the documentation for the board is available. Okay. Great, thank you so much. And this will actually be our last question for the day. So we have Omar asking, does the cellular operator need to deploy new networks to support NB IoT or LTEM? or do they run over actual LTE networks? Um, that's a good question. Um, as far as I'm aware, aware, they're running on just the, the existing um, networks. Obviously, there's something, some changes they have to do to, because if not, everybody would support it, right? Yeah. It's a different standard. Uh, so I'm not an expert on <coughs> how they actually deploy these networks. So um, um, that's pretty much <laughs> all I can say about that. All right, thank you so much, Johan, for answering all of those questions. Thank you so much to our audience this morning for participating. Make sure if, we have a, if you have a question that we didn't get to, you can always email us at that livestream at microchip.com email. And if you make sure you like and subscribe to us on all platforms, so you'll be the first to know when our next coffee break's coming up. Thanks, everyone, and back to you, Eric. Great, thanks, Allison. Johan, thank you for joining us and sharing your knowledge about this great topic. And thank you to our audience for taking some time out of your day to uh, listen to this Coffee Break episode on cellular IoT. We know that your time is valuable, and we hope that uh, you've learned something that helps you in your, in your design efforts. For more information, um, for, to see what's going on with our next episodes, please visit microchip.com slash coffee break. You can see the episodes posted, you can subscribe for updates, you can add episodes directly to uh, your calendar so you don't miss them in the upcoming weeks. Thanks again for your time. We're, we're glad you visited us today and have a good day. Thank you.